Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer. I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. Today's video is always a fan favorite, talking about how to save money on your wedding, and today we are specifically talking about saving money on the alcohol at your wedding. So food and drink are, are probably the largest ticket items, the largest amount of money you're going to spend on your wedding outside of your venue itself. These are the two categories that can add up very, very quickly and are very, very dependent dependent on your guest count too. So if you are considering the, the best ways to save money or what's going to cost the most in direct relation to your, your guest count, food and drink is probably top of the list for that. So keep that in mind. When it comes to alcohol specifically, there are a lot of ways that this can be driven, the cost can be driven up pretty high. But there's also several ways that you can bring this as, as low as possible if you are trying to save the most amount of money, specifically trying to save money on your alcohol. So here are eight ways to reduce the cost of alcohol at your wedding. The first way is pretty obvious and obviously the easiest way to save money and that is to just have a cash bar. So you're not supplying the, the cost of any of the alcohol. You are bringing the alcohol on site and then you have uh, your guests paying for their drinks with a cash bar. Now, while this is obviously the, the quickest and easiest way to save money on your alcohol, I don't necessarily re recommend this option. Um, you're, you're asking your guests to come and celebrate this day for you, uh, likely they're going to be traveling, they're going to be bringing you a gift, they're going to be setting aside this, this day, taking a vacation day, whatever it is, they are coming to celebrate you. It's just kind courtesy to be able to provide them with a couple of beverages and a meal. Unless it is an absolute dire need, I don't recommend having a cash bar, even though that's obviously the, the quickest way you're going to save money on your alcohol. But I had to mention it as that is obviously an option. Number two is to not have your bar open until after the ceremony. So skipping any pre-ceremony cocktail hour, pre-ceremony drinks, not even having your bar open until your more formal cocktail hour once the ceremony is over. You'd be surprised how many guests will show up early and then get those drinks you could easily have a several hundred dollar bar tab before the, the the ceremony even starts so not have your bar open until cocktail hour will save you money on the overall bar tab number three is to supply your own alcohol this isn't a straight across the board always going to save you money it is likely going to save you money but this is also dependent on where you live what the alcohol prices are where you live what your options are to be able to purchase this alcohol if it's taxed all of that so it isn't like a 100 percent all the time supplying your own alcohol is going to be cheaper and there are also some disadvantages to supplying your own alcohol as well. So while you can likely source a lot of your alcohol cheaper if you get it yourself, by not having a full service caterer that is going to provide the alcohol, you are then responsible for calculating how much you are going to need of each type of alcohol for the duration of your wedding. And this can be really difficult when you don't have the guidance of a professional alcohol caterer kind of giving their input and knowing how much to bring. So that can be just kind of a tricky Thing to note when it comes to supplying your own alcohol if that is an avenue you want to explore. An important note here too is you may not be allowed to supply your own alcohol depending on the venue that you are getting married at and what their policies and liquor licenses are. So a lot of venues will require a fully licensed and full service alcohol caterer which means that if you are going to be hiring one of these caterers, they typically require all of the alcohol to be purchased through them. So again, keep that in mind. It may not be an option for you to supply your own alcohol, but this is a way that you could potentially save a lot of money on alcohol as well. Number four is to have only beer and wine at your bar. So by eliminating liquor options, you're not only not pay for those liquor options, which are typically more expensive by volume than bulk beer and wine, but you also are not having to supply a, a range of, of liquor options as well as the mixers that come with it. So overall, less expensive to only serve beer and wine. You can also get away with less bartenders when you are serving just beer and wine or no bartenders at all, which I don't recommend. But again, if you are really trying to cut down on as many costs as possible, you can get away with 
potentially no bartenders again if that's something that your venue allows when you have just beer and wine because that's easy to self-serve you're not having to mix drinks take that can take time to actually mix drinks if you're having cocktails um, so you can cut down on a bartender as it's a lot quicker and efficient to just pour beer and wine than it is to be mixing cocktails um, number five, if you like the idea of having just beer and wine, but you do want to have some kind of liquor option for your guests, having just beer and wine and one or maybe two signature cocktails is still a way to have some liquor options, but be saving a lot of money as opposed to having a fully stocked bar or several liquor options and, mi and mixer options at the bar. It's to just have one or two signature cocktails. That way you are only needing to provide the ingredients for those particular cocktail items and not be having a fully stocked bar. Number six is to skip the champagne toast. So a lot of couples will choose to have toast during dinner or maybe this is during cocktail hour and traditionally this was always served with champagne. Um, but if you're really trying to save money on the alcohol at your wedding, it's really easy to just cut out that champagne toast. That way you're not having to supply the champagne outside of what you're supplying at the bar. This is just champagne counts for um, each guest that's going to be in attendance during dinner. A lot of times guests won't even drink the champagne that's poured for the toast and they'll just be drinking whatever they already have from the bar and then that just goes to waste. So that's an easy thing to just cut out from the budget and skip the champagne toast. You can still do toast. Guests will just toast with whatever they are currently drinking. Number seven, um, if you do want to be able to serve liquor and maybe you want to have several options, having just a particular window of time where um, liquor or cocktails are served is a way to be able to cut down on what the overall cost of your, your bar tab is going to be. So for example, perhaps you have beer and wine and maybe champagne or some kind of sparkle option at your bar for the duration of the night, but you only have cocktails available for like a two hour window, or maybe it's just for cocktail hour, or maybe it's through dinner and then once dinner is over, then it's just beer and wine at the bar. This way you are still kind of providing that option for a little bit for guests. They can be able to choose whatever they would like to drink at the bar, but not having to provide that for the duration of the entire night. And number eight, a final way to save money on your alcohol and bar catering is to have a bar tab that you have already discussed with your whoever is bartending, catering your alcohol. Have a tab that you have prepaid or that you agree to pay to a certain amount. And then once that is hit, then it just becomes a cash bar. You could also do this based on time. So maybe you have agreed with the bartenders that you will be paying the tab until 10 p.m. and then once 10 p.m. hits, then it becomes a cash bar. So however you choose to do this, whether it's a do dollar amount that you plan to reach that you are covering, and then after that becomes a cash bar, or perhaps it's by hour and you are planning to cover the full bar tab until a certain time, and then it becomes a cash bar after that. Like I said, alcohol is one of those things that can be one of the highest priced items for your wedding, especially if you were having a larger guest count. So here are some ways that you can potentially bring that cost down. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.